So when I first started trading on Betfair, I wasn't actually trading. What I was doing is I was arbing. I would basically go to a bookmaker, back something at the best odds that I could get, and then I would lay it off on the exchange. So if we look at a Betfair trading ladder, you can sort of see exactly why this would work. Because if I can go to a bookmaker and back this particular horse um, at odds of three, but it's available to lay at sort of 280-ish on the exchange, then I'll net the profit between the two. That is a, how I started um, on Betfair. I'd basically arb. Uh, I would go and get the best odds I could and then lay them off on the exchange. However, one day I went to put a bet on the exchange, did it incorrectly, tried to correct it, and trading was born. Suddenly I realized that in fact, rather than going to a bookmaker and getting the best odds that you possibly could, um, and laying off on the exchange, all you would do is put two orders into the exchange. You would look to lay at the lowest price that you could possibly, back at the highest price that you could possibly, and you would net the profit between the two. And hey presto, Betfair Trading was born. Um, but if you want to understand exactly why Betfair Trading is profitable um, and the way that profit is generated within a market, it's worth getting an understanding of this because this will define exactly how you will gain a profit. It's a process that I went through at the very start of my Betfair trading career. And when you look at uh, what I'm about to present to you, this should describe to you beautifully exactly what your objective is and where all of this profit comes from within the market. If you're interested in learning to use BetAngel, head on over to our website where you can download a free trial. If you're interested in learning how to use it, then head over to the Bet Angel Academy where you can do exactly that. And if you want to talk to like-minded people, then head on over to our forum. So your objective when trading is to lay at a lower price than you back at or back at a higher price than you lay at. And if we look at the favorite within this particular market, you can see it's traded at three, it's traded down at two and a half, and it's trading sort of near three again. So in this particular market, we could have backed at three, and then trade it out um, at two and a half, or we could have laid at two and a half and trade it out somewhere near three. The, which direction we choose to do that in doesn't particularly matter. And of course, in this market, you can see that we've been able to do both. Uh, but fundamentally speaking, if we had a hundred pound and we backed or laid at two and a half and three, you would net 50% of that in profit. You would have made 100, uh, you would have made 50 pound profit on 100 pound. Um, that you actively traded through this market. Um, it went as low as two and a half, and then it went back up to three. So people who were backing at three got good value. People backing at two and a half didn't. People laying at two and a half got good value. Uh, people laying at three didn't get such good value, but it's that difference of opinion that generates the profit for you. Now, different markets have different behaviors. And when we look at this particular market here, which is a quite long um, competitive handicap at Sedgefield, you can see that the traded range is much smaller. But you can also see that the odds are different as well. So again, you know, if, if we have a look at the graph here, we'll see what the situation is. You can see it's sort of bounced around between five and six repeatedly. Now, from a trading perspective, we've got a couple of options here in terms of how we could trade this market. We could say, well, this is the top of the market. This is the bottom. We're going to wait for the price to come down. We're going to um, trade it as it hits the bottom or as it hits the top. Or we could say this is, we're sort of in the middle of the market here, and therefore we think um, that the price is going to go up, and therefore we're going to lay it first on the anticipation that the price will go up. Or we could say it's going to reach the low end of this particular traded range, and therefore we're going to back it and the price goes down. You can actually see there's a little bit of activity taking place at the exact moment that I said that. Pure coincidence. Um, but fundamentally speaking, you're sort of making a judgment on what's likely to happen within the market. And very often people feel that you need to have some amazing insight in order to be able to particularly do this. In other words, you have to have an opinion on where the price is likely to go. Now, it does help. And there are little clues that are left all over the market that give you an indication as to where the price could go. But it doesn't mean that you can't profit if you have absolutely no idea. So let's have a look specifically at what I'm talking about uh, when I say that you can profit even if you have no idea as to where the price is going. So here's a trade that I did this week. I laid at four and a half with 250 pound and I backed at five and a half with 250 pound, which meant that I netted on this particular runner 250 pound. 
The way that I did that is you can see from the chart that I anticipated that the drift that started when I joined the market would continue. And basically I had to anticipate that movement in direction of these odds. So if you look at this trade, you can see that I seem to have done worse. I've only earned 30 pound and I've had to use stakes of 300 pound to earn that. But this trade was actually much lower risk because on this particular trade, if we look at the chart, you can see the chart sort of didn't go anywhere. It just meandered all over the place. And in fact, I never used 300 pound on this particular trade. I used 100 pound three times. So this trade was directionless. I didn't have to try and figure out which direction the trade was going to go in. I basically put £100 through the market three times and I didn't need to know if there was any directional bias in this market. To understand how I achieved that, let's have a quick look at a video where I contrast these two different methods. So I'm going to do a couple of simple little trades here. And um, on one of them, um, I'm going to put an order in the market and we'll see what happens. So if I look at this particular market, I'm thinking, well, let's, for example, put a back order in um, on the favorite here. What this is going to do is when that back order fills, in order for us to move into profit, the price needs to sort of start heading down in this particular direction. But what I'll do as well is I'll put an order in somewhere else. We'll keep an eye on both of these. And if I go over here and put an order in on both sides, um, we'll see what happens on this particular trade. So you can see part of it's been matched at 11 and a half. And basically, if the price comes down to meet us at 11, then we get our five pound profit. What I'm going to do over here is leave this. I'm not going to actively manage this particular trade. And by looking at both of these, you'll be able to get an idea as to how the trade's going. So you can see here, if the price starts to go up, um, then that will lead to a potential loss. And if the price goes down, then it will lead to a potential profit. So over here, can you see our trade has been matched. Um, so now we have the opportunity to decide what we want to do again. Do we want to place another trade in this market at this particular point? So if I put another couple of trades uh, in the market at this particular point, you'll see I put the opening and the closing trade into the market. Meanwhile, over here, can you see that this price has gone slightly against us um, and it's heading in this, well, it's sort of heading nowhere really. And you can see equal amounts of money have been matched on both sides here. Um, but we can still see that we're having to wait for the price to head down in this particular direction in order to be able to make a profit. And meanwhile, over here, we've got some money sat at 10 and a half. Um, and if this trade gets matched, there's a little bit of money in front of us and not much money waiting at 10 and a half. But if it does get matched, we would have successfully completed another trade. Meanwhile, over here, we're looking at the price activity and we're sort of trying to think about, you know, is the price going to head down in this direction? We're trying to make a judgment on that. Um, but in the time that we've been trying to make that judgment and trying to get our small amount of money out of here, can you see we've completed another trade over here? So let's give it another go. So now that this trade is actually beginning to move into a little bit of profit, what we could actually do is say, oh, you know, our target price is really the, the low price that we've seen within the market. Up here it's saying £10 to lay. So if I put my £10 lay order in the market here and wait for it to get matched, we can see if we do get matched at that particular price point. But you can see that we're slowly running out of time. I'm nervously looking over um, at the um, race course to see when these particular runners are going underway. A little bit of price activity close to the off here has sent the price uh, coming in a little bit and then you can see the price has gone back out again. And um, over here, we've got a little bit of money sat waiting for us to get matched. Given we've got just seconds left to get this match, what I'm going to do is move that order up to get it matched at 4.9. But you can see at 10 and a half, we get matched again. And you can see we've got a nice little profit over here um, overall. But if we actually look over here, we're still waiting to get matched at 4.9. I'm going to hang on until the dying moments here when it looks like the race is about to get on way and we have been finally matched over here. Overall, we've got a £15 profit on one step at a time, a £2 profit on Atomic Angel. And if we hedge that, we'll end up with a profit of £2 over all uh, runners within this particular market. So what I've tried to demonstrate here is that you don't need to know where the price is going in order to be able to make money. On the video that I showed you, 
we did actually look at directional bias on one particular trade, but you see, it made a little bit of money, but not much. And in fact, the trade that we were doing that had no directional bias, in fact, did a little bit better, and it was also at lower risk. So both trading methods are valid, but necessarily what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that you don't need to know what direction something is going in in order to be able to profit.